amazes me how often we make uh, excuses for why we can't do what we need to do. Here we are, grossing a trillion dollars in this economy, and yet we still making excuses for why we can't do what we need to do. Let's take, at, uh, take a look right here. Hampton University, Booker T. Washington. He graduated from Hampton, president of Hampton, European American, got a phone call from Tuskegee, Alabama, said we need a black man to come down here and teach our people how to make a living. He asked Booker T. Washington, you want to take this job? Booker T. said, why not? He got to Tuskegee, Alabama. He looked around. There was no school there. Did he complain about it? Nope. He used a half-finished garage, an old church, a half-finished school structure. And he started having his first classes there. When the first group of students came to Tuskegee and didn't see any institutions, they looked at Mr. Washington and said, well, where are we going to sleep? Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to learn? Where are we going to wash? And Booker T. Washington said, what? Roll up your sleeves because we're going to build the buildings ourselves. And so the students of Tuskegee University, this is a true story. If you haven't read Up From Slavery, you need to read it. That's the book that actually motivated the Honorable Marcus Garvey to become a race leader. They built their own buildings, made their own clothes, their own food, their own bedding, their own pillows. They became so famous in Tuskegee for making bricks that the white constructors around Alabama would come to the university and buy their bricks from the students of Tuskegee. Oh, oh. And look at us, they had nothing and look what they done. You gross a trillion dollars every year and you've done nothing. And got a nerve to think you're making progress. What is your definition of progress? Because I'm confused. For most of us, progress is to the extent that educated black folk can be drafted by the American social order to be used against other black people. That's most of your definitions. Yeah, no, preacher. Most of you raise your children to do just that. Yes, sir. Grow up, get a good job, you might be president of the United States. And what good is that for the rest of us? Another problem. You might be Secretary of State, you might be the next Tyler Perry, you might be the next Oprah. And what good is that to the rest of us? Be careful how you raise your children. Because some of you are drafting them into the American social order without even understanding what's going on. And when I say American social order, we're not saying we're against America. I'm not against any nation. But I am against hypocrisy, wherever it may be, even if it looks like me. And another issue we have is we are too loyal to personalities instead of principles. Yeah. You have to switch that around. My loyalty to anybody is only to the extent that they do what's in the best interest of my people. But some of you will be loyal to pastors and national black leaders and elected politicians just because you knew them since childhood. If they're not doing the business of the people, how can you still be loyal? Because if you're loyal to someone, who is a turncoat that automatically makes you one too. Yes, sir. You got to be able to drop that and move on. What's the next science? 